Hey, Leo Dreger here. I want to talk about uh, some of the wireless pen testing tools. And one of the first tools that you're going to want to run is um, basically a packet sniffer, a wireless scanner called Kismet. Uh, Kismet's a great little scanner. I like to think of it as kind of like a police scanner for wireless networks. So what we're going to do is walk through the setup and basically just do some basic wireless sniffing. So first thing we're going to do in our Kali operating system is we're going to go over to Kali, go over to wireless, wireless tools, and then start Kismet. It's right from the menu. You can, of course, just type Kismet from the uh, bash uh, prompt, and that'll be just fine. Okay, so K-I-S-M-E-T. It says Kismet is running as root. Kismet was started as root. This isn't recommended. Way to start Kismet and can be dangerous. Only dangerous because basically it gets a higher priority to the system. Um, if you're just kind of poking and prodding around, it is absolutely fine. So you can say, you know, do not show this warning again or just go ahead and select OK. So automatically start the Kismet server, launch Kismet server and connect to it automatically. If you use a Kismet server started elsewhere, choose no. In this case, I don't have another instance of it running, so I'm going to go ahead and select yes. Okay, startup options if I want anything, set logging to on, the log title is Kismet, show the console, and then go ahead and click start. And you should start seeing some basic information and or error messages pop to the screen. Now you can see uh, one of the error messages that I'm getting towards the bottom here could not connect to the GPS server. We'll reconnect in five seconds, and then 10 seconds, and then 15, and it'll continue to doing this. Uh, but it did accept the connection from 127.00.1. So Kismet started with no packet sources defined. No sources were defined or all defined sources encountered unrecoverable errors. Kismet will not be able to capture any data until a capture interface is added. Would you like to do this? This is a relatively easy uh, message to get around because we just simply have to add our interfaces. So go ahead and select yes. In this case, the interface is going to be WLAN0, the name of it, wireless LAN0, and any sort of options you could add. Otherwise, just go ahead and select add. And it says, hey, uh, Kismet is start. And you can read these uh, messages here. They go by relatively quickly, but I'm already starting to see traffic because of all of these detected, 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 plus I'm seeing the MAC addresses of the interfaces, plus the actual SSID names of the interfaces as they're coming in. The one that we're going to be working with is Cybrary, which you can see right there towards the top. So uh, close the console window. That's going to be fine. And then you can see, if I make this a little bit bigger, that basically I have my... Um, uh, console basically um, detecting information now just this in itself is huge because it tells me a lot of things one I have my uh, wireless card connected the wireless card that I'm using right now is, what you can see in the VM setup is the uh, Etheros UB 91 c interface wireless card which is a great card to use um, you can basically set up a wireless pen testing kit for right around, you know, $100, uh, and that would probably get you a decent card, uh, maybe a GPS receiver, and if you're lucky, maybe a Bluetooth sniffer as well, or a Bluetooth antenna. So we're going to go here. You can see the Cybrary interface here. Uh, if I scroll down, um, it's going to bounce around a little bit, but if I just read uh, Cybrary, it's, um, it, it, you can see that it's on channel one. It's receiving packets. I've got some size and some traffic on it. Um, and there's a couple things running on channel one. Others are running on channel six and 11. So those are definitely the, the, the high traffic channels at the, at the moment. Okay, and then basically it's just going through this, and you can click on this menu up here. There's your server console. I can do a D for disconnect or C to connect. I can add a source. I can configure a channel, configure plugins, and you basically can just kind of go through this if you if you wanted to. Uh, so if I wanted to add a plugin, I could select the plugin, um, and it's basically just you know you scroll down with your up and down arrows, hit enter here. So preferences. If I wanted to set up some preference, I could set up colors or a GPS or um, network columns or servers or wardings or start and stop the server. 
okay also I can sort I can right now it's set to auto sort but I can sort by type channel what's encrypted versus not so if I just do e this will basically set it up to um, what's set up for encryption and that'll stop it from bouncing around a little bit so that's a good idea to sort okay um, otherwise if you do a um, a just click on the sort menu here at the top you'll be able to see uh, the, the the networks in play here so uh, like S for sort or K for kismet or V for view uh, and W for windows okay uh, so I like to do a control alt and that'll get me to that menu and then S for sort or hit enter etc etc okay so you can scroll through that you can do first scene last scene sort by a, a, a BSS ID or an SS ID um, and then you can just basically uh, you know either type the the letter here that you want and that'll automatically do it for you if you're in the keyboard shortcuts or you can actually just scroll through and actually select it if you want so now I've got it uh, set to SS ID now the cool part about what Kismet does is, is it actually shows you which people have their SSID said to do not broadcast uh, and I like that because you know what are they trying to hide at that point okay but we're gonna scroll down here and look at Cybrary which is uh, the access point that I currently have set up you can see the BSS ID 001 F 90 F 28614 and it's basically set up to encrypt a web traffic so I can go ahead and hit enter there and I can kind of scroll through here and get a basic overview of how that access point set up. So I have your SSID, Cybrary, your BSSID, again, 001F, and we'll just call it 001F for short. Um, and it's definitely very helpful to go ahead and write that down because whenever you're doing any sort of the attacks, you're going to need to reference these BSSIDs, and especially if you start getting into spoofing access points and things like that. Uh, the manufacturer is Action uh, uh, TE, which is Action Tech, which is a, basically a default Verizon access point that I've had for some time now. I just started it, so it's first seen. That's accurate. It's an access point. It's set up as a managed infrastructure. It's running on channel one. It shows me the frequencies that it's running on and what packets it's seen per frequency and what percentage of the traffic. So it's running on uh, frequency 24, 12, and 17 the most because that's where about 70% of the traffic is actually coming on. The SSID is Cybrary. So not only does it say the name at the top, but also the SSID at the bottom. The beacon. Okay, so beacons are types of traffic. Um, this is basically an advertisement to one access point to another access point. The 802.11D country, I'm set in the United States. The encryption uh, level is set. Uh, the 10% of the traffic has been beacons. Also, I have my signals, noise, um, what encryption it thinks it's set as. So it's picking up that it's set up as web, which is correct. And the interface in which it's seen on uh, wireless LAN zero. Okay, and so that'll give you a basic overview um, of uh, basically how this is set up. Okay, so uh, accidentally shut down the server. So let me start it back up again. And you notice it, it's okay to do that. Uh, you, you sometimes you'll go in and out of this little scanner time after time after time after time. So in a second it should pop up, um, or you can actually just tell it to start the server. So Kismet start server, start it, give it a second to run. Okay, so now that the server's back up and running. We can go ahead and uh, basically look at the different types of, of traffic here. So um, you can set for specific networks if you want to do an Alt N that will bring you to the network menu. Um, we're not going to need that right now, so we're going to class out of that. Also, you could do an Alt V, um, and that will show you the, the view menu as well. So 
Um, if you wanted to mess with that, you certainly could. All right. So Okay, so now that Kismet is back up and running, I have it sorted uh, to Cybrary, and you get all of the basic details that you need here right in this menu. And you get to specifically see some of the, the traffic and the pattern, and I've got it sorted the, the Cybrary. Otherwise, some of the other things that you guys can do in here is you can go through the, the sort menus, the view menus, if you want to look at the BPS, uh, GPS data, battery information status uh, these are all different um, things that you can add um, specifically like client lists and things like that per uh, interface so you can see that I've got a couple clients connected to the library uh, interface as well that's helpful because that tells you one uh, corresponding to the number of packets that the access point is actually seeing you would expect a network with large number of clients to produce a lot more traffic so that would make sense as well um, otherwise, you know, you kind of just you kind of poke around. Then it's all based off of keyboard shortcuts, and like I said, it's used as a police scanner uh, in, in of sorts. So if you just want to read these information messages right here, you can kind of see what's happening between the clients and the server and things like that. Um, if you do decide to use this with a particular GPS client, that'll be really, really helpful for plotting the networks out. I currently don't have the GPS set up uh, at this time, uh, but I could easily uh, do that as well. I just have to plug it in and then, um, you, you know, have the Kismet basically read the GPS data as well. And then you can go out and you can start war driving or, um, you know, uh, you know, war walking or war chalking, which is your symbols. You can start, go ahead and do all that, the classic stuff right away okay otherwise it's basically just poking and, and prodding around and getting an idea of of how this works so you know the kismet menu really really uh, simple all right plugins preferences disconnect and connect start the server stop the server sort you know by type channel if it's encrypted or not the basic server set identifier the server set identifier the number of packets uh, and you know what you actually want to view like the client list sometimes it's easier to take off that client list um, just because it, it cleans up your interface a little bit so uh, like I said basic program to use I love it as a basic sniffer a quick sanity check for for who's out there um, and then you can have some fun with it then you start getting into some of the advanced details you want to start seeing the the client list for that particular interface you can start pulling the MAC addresses of the clients connected to it um, Right. And then finally, you just shut down the server. Control C will shut it down. It'll say uh, Kismet client is exiting. So that's the basic setup of a little wireless scanner like Kismet. Um, there are other ones that are certainly more popular, but this gets you all the critical information that you need. So that way, if you want to start doing, you know, air monitor or something like this, uh, you could get, you know, the basic service set identifier and things like that right away. Because the next step would be to take the things that you learned from Kismet and then start learning how to do some like of the air crack NG suites. So, um, you know, for example, for example, air monitor, uh, dash ng 
is uh, certainly going to be, um, uh, you know, one of the next things that you're going to want to do. So I just did an Airman NG dash H, and you can see Airman dash NG start, stop, check the interface, and then the channel. So just to give you an idea, Airman dash NG start sniffing the traffic use your interface WLAN 0 and we were set to uh, channel 1 channel or frequency now the uh, some of the mandatory stuff is going to be in the um, greater than and less than brackets so like start stop check that's mandatory and then interface is mandatory and then the channel or frequency is optional uh, but you know if you know it you know add it in okay so here's an Airman, um, found three processes that could cause trouble. If error dump, error play, or error tune stops working after a short period, you may want to kill some of them. So in this case, the network manager, the WPA client, and the DH client, these are all potentially interfering with this, uh, which is similar to doing an Airman-ng check. Okay. So uh, in some of the old um, conventions, you could do a check kill. Um, and so that will actually uh, is very, very helpful because anything that has the potential for interfering with this, it'll actually kill the processes that are interfering. So you can do that right from within this, as opposed to doing something like a kill or a PS kill or, or something like that, where you actually have to type all of this stuff in. Basically, if you just put kill at the end of your statement, that'll uh, certainly speed things up. And then we'll just go um, turn it on again. And now we get something completely different. So air monitor started for the wireless interface on channel one. So we've got uh, WLAN zero monitor interface with my arrow card um, and monitor mode enabled on monitor one. And then we also get our monitor channel. So basically we're set to monitor mode at this point. So one, I've just done some very, very, very basic stuff here. I set up Kismet as a scanner. I, uh, uh, looked around, I got some basic information that I need, and then I can go ahead and spin that off of uh, and then run that into some other uh, labs like uh, Air Monitor and things like that. And we'll cover those in subsequent uh, videos and things like that. But I just want to get the basics of Kismet set up first um, so that I can start sniffing out basic service set identifiers. Um, and it will be helpful to have a pen and paper handy so that you can jot down SSIDs and clients and MAC addresses and um, extended service set identity identifiers and things like that so that's an overview of uh, kismet thanks for watching my name is leo drager and i'll see you in the next video